the Red Sea. Magnificent coral gardens with schools of brightly colored fish in clear blue waters, a place of which many legends are told. In the mythical tales about the inhabitants of the sea and the people who traveled these waters, dolphins often play a leading role. In February 2001, an incident occurred which has led to a special research effort. A young Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphin was attacked by a shark. Alone, wounded and weakened, he decided to join a group of divers. These people, aware of the dolphin's condition, offered him safety and protection while respectfully avoiding any physical interaction. Over the following weeks, the people kept an eye out for the wounded bottlenose, which was subsequently encountered on several reefs. As the animal's wounds were beginning to heal, he suddenly showed up with a whole pod of dolphins and led them to his human friends. Over many of these encounters in the weeks, months and years that followed, a bond of trust developed. A friendship between dolphins and humans that lasts until the present day. One of these people is dive leader, writer and filmmaker Michael Stallermann, who has documented the dolphin and his family with his camera over the years that followed. In 2009, together with biologist Angela Ziltner from the Anthropological Institute of Zurich, he started the Dolphin Watch Natural Underwater Science Project. Other members of the research team are dive instructor and underwater photographer Sandra Caramel and biologist Corinne Ackermann. Building on the experience and data collected since 2001, the project has a number of ambitious goals. The whereabouts of solitary animals, as well as the population size and distribution of the Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins in the Hurghada region. The identification of habitats used for different activities such as resting, carving, mating, hunting and feeding. Documentation and analysis of social behavior and social structure such as friendships and group formation. Observation and documentation of specific behavior which may be unique to the Indo-Pacific bottlenose in the Hurghada region. Observation and analysis of environmental influences, in particular those of dolphin tourism, on the behavior of the animals. Cataloging the local bottlenose dolphins is not, as is usually the case, confined to images of fins on the surface. It's complemented by underwater identification material. Through the images of scars, marks on pectoral fins or flukes, almost all bottlenose dolphins, also those without marked fins, can be identified and distinguished from each other. In the first year alone, a hundred Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins were catalogued through this methodology. Die Katalogisierung der Delfine ist ein erster und ein sehr wichtiger Schritt, damit man die einzelnen Tiere voneinander unterscheiden kann. Nur dann ist es möglich, etwas über ihre Freundschaften, ihre Familienstruktur und ihre Wanderrouten auszusagen. To build the first catalogue of Indo-Pacific dolphins in the northern part of the Red Sea, over 40,000 pictures were taken, edited and filed. In addition, an archive of video footage documenting the social and other behaviour of the local dolphins has been established. The existing bond of trust between the researchers and the dolphins has made it possible to dive with individual animals or with entire pods. Obwohl wir schon so viele Tauchgänge mit den Delfinen gemacht haben, ist es für uns immer wieder ein ergreifendes Erlebnis, das Vertrauen der Delfine fühlen zu können und es aus nächster Nähe aufnehmen zu dürfen. The researchers have been accepted as members of the group, enabling them to take part in their underwater life for a longer period of time. As a consequence, observations have been made possible without the divers significantly disturbing the dolphin behavior. Um mit den wilden Delfinen zu tauchen und ihr Vertrauen zu gewinnen, lernen Forscher und Volontäre, die mit uns arbeiten, nicht nur, wie sie in besonderen Situationen zu verhalten. Am Anfang absolvieren sie ein besonderes Bewegungsstil und Ausdauertraining. Das befähigt sie später dazu, integriert in die Horde bei Spiel und Wanderung mitzuhalten. Studies here and around the world have shown dolphins to be much more open to encounters with humans when they're approached with care and due respect. Only then will they show themselves and play in the presence of human company. 
If approached too quickly by engine-powered boats, the dolphins will become restless and lose interest in the human encounter. This makes the massive pursuit of dolphins, in which tourists are driven up to the animals as close as possible, an often short-lived and unsuccessful affair. The physical strain put on the dolphins is very exhausting and stressful for the animals. Engine and propeller noise in particular have a negative impact on dolphins and their communication. If people do not change their behavior towards the animals, it is feared that dolphins will avoid their natural resting places in the future as a result. An vielen Orten der Welt wurden bereits schon Richtlinien erstellt, die Veranstalter von Delfintouren einhalten müssen. Dazu gehört zum Beispiel, dass die Boote einen Mindestabstand einzuhalten haben und die Schnorchler oder Taucher sich respektvoll gegenüber den Tieren verhalten. Based on the research outcomes, recommended guidelines for the interaction between humans and dolphins are being established. At the same time, collected data and findings are used as arguments to convince the authorities to establish protected areas for the dolphins in certain areas of the Red Sea. The unreleased and ongoing results of Dolphin Watch Natural Underwater Science are anticipated with much excitement.